Welcome back, my students. Today, we're going to learn about subject verb agreement rules. So let's get started. Subjects and verbs must agree in number. If the subject is singular, the verb must be singular too. For example, he works every day. He is the subject, works is the verb or the action. There is an exception. When using the singular they, use plural forms. If you don't know if it's a he or a she, or if you don't want to say he or she, you can use they. For example, the participant expressed dissatisfaction with their job. They are currently discussing their situation with their boss. As you can see, you don't know what the gender is. This is also the rule for people using non-binary pronouns, they, them, and their. Now, a lot of my students ask me, can't I just use he or she? And the answer would be, yes, you could say, the participant expressed dissatisfaction with his or her job. He or she is currently discussing his or her situation with his or her boss. As you can see, using they, them, and their is a lot easier, and it sounds better than always saying his or her, he or she. When we're writing and speaking, they, them, and their is much easier and sounds better. So the next time you find yourself saying he or she, try saying they, them, and their. Here's the next rule. If the subject is plural, the verb must also be plural. For example, they play computer games every day. Plural means more than one. Here you can see there are two people. One, two. Two people. We use they. And the verb or the action is play, not plays. They play computer games every day. And here's something to remember. Every day is a word grouping. Those two words go together every day. You will never, ever say every days. Never. Okay, here's our next rule. When the subject of the sentence is composed of two or more nouns or pronouns connected by and, use the plural verb. For example, the cat and dog play together every day. The cat and dog play. Here we have one cat and one dog. Two animals play, not plays. Let's look at another example. My cat and his dog. Here we're using the pronouns my and his. My cat and his dog eat chicken treats. Here the verb is eat. Again, we don't use eats when we have two things and it's connected with an and. Here's the next rule. When there is one subject and more than one verb, the verbs throughout the sentence must agree with the subject. For example, Exams are one way to test a student's knowledge and are a great way to help a student understand where they need to improve. As you can see, the word R is used because the word exams, the subject, is plural. And we use R again later in the sentence here and are a great way to help a student. And one more thing to look at. We use the word they because we don't know if the student is a male or female. Let's look at another example. My idea is to make an outline before writing a paper because it's helpful. Here I'm using my idea, that's the pronoun, and the subject is my idea. It's one idea, so we use is. And later on in the sentence, it says, it's helpful. It is my idea. And again, 
it's one idea, so it is helpful. Great, now let's look at another rule. When a phrase comes between the subject and the verb, remember that the verb still agrees with the subject, not the noun or pronoun in the phrase following the subject of the sentence. For example, the student as well as the organizers is excited. This one you have to be careful of. The student is excited. That's the sentence. The part in the middle as well as the organizers, well, that's just extra information. You can always test this by removing that part of the sentence. The student is excited. One student that is excited. And the organizers, they're excited too, but that's just extra information. Let's look at another example. The student with all the books is very motivated. With all the books, that's the extra information. We can remove that and just say, the student is very motivated. But that extra information makes the sentence more descriptive. Strategies that the teacher uses to encourage classroom participation include using small groups and clarifying expectations. Do you see the extra information in this sentence? The subject is strategies, and the sentence is talking about strategies, not the teacher. The extra information is that the teacher uses to encourage classroom participation. If we take that away, we can say strategies include using small groups and clarifying expectations. So the verb is include. If you got that, Great job. Let's look at one more example. The focus on the interview was to allow participants time to answer the questions. Where's the extra information in this sentence? Here's a hint. Remember to look for that action word. Do you see it? The action? Allow. Now do you see the extra information? Let's take it away. The focus was to allow participants time to answer questions. Of the interviews, that's the extra information. The focus was to allow participants time to answer questions. Okay, I think you've got it. We're almost halfway through with rule number six. Remember, let me know if you have any questions about these rules in the comments section below. When two or more singular nouns or pronouns are connected by or or nor, use a singular verb. For example, Mike or Bob approves any proposals. One Mike, one Bob approves is the action. Mike or Bob approves any proposals. Neither Mike nor Bob pays for parking. Neither is our negative, and we use nor with neither. One Mike, one Bob, and the action is pays. Neither Mike nor Bob pays for parking. Here's the next rule. When a compound subject contains both a singular and a plural noun or pronoun joined by or or nor, the verb should agree with the part of the subject that is closest to the verb. This is also called the rule of proximity. You can write this sentence in two ways. The student or the committee members meet every day with the advisor. Or, the committee members or the student meet every day with the advisor. I've explained how to use nor in another video and the link is in the description box below. The words and phrases each, each one, either, neither, everyone, everybody, anyone, anybody, no one, nobody, someone, and somebody are singular and require a singular verb. Here are some examples. 
each of the participants was willing to be recorded. Neither alternative was accepted. I will give five dollars to everyone who participates in the study. No one eats junk food. As you can see in each of these sentences, we use the singular verb. Was is the past tense of is. Was willing, was accepted, participates, and eats. Here's our next rule. non countable nouns take a singular verb. Education is the key to success. Poverty affects many people around the world. The information obtained from the informant was relevant to the case. The research I found on this topic was abundant. Here's the next rule. Some countable nouns in English such as earnings, goods, odds, surroundings, proceeds, contents, and valuables only have a plural form and take a plural verb. For example, the earnings for the year exceed expectations. A good way to remember this rule is if the sentence is using a countable noun and it's in a plural form or ends in S, then you want to use the plural verb, that action. Like in this sentence, the earnings for the year exceed expectations. Let's look at another example. The proceeds from the sale go to charity. Locally produced goods have helped people save money. Here's the next rule. In sentences beginning with there is or there are, the subject follows the verb. Since there is not the subject, the verb agrees with what follows the verb. For example, there is little effort being made to solve the problem. There are many factors affecting student retention. Here's the next rule. Collective nouns are words that imply more than one person but are considered singular and take a singular verb. Some examples are group, team, committee, family, and class. The group meets once a week. The family agrees on where they will go on their vacation. The best way to remember this one is to think of the group or the family or the committee is it. It's one group. And if you remember that, you can remember it meets, it agrees. And that's the best way to remember this rule. For more rules, check out this video. And as always, thanks for watching my students and please Keep practicing. Bye.